Shalom, and welcome again to Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem, uh, to the old city of Jerusalem, to our shop, Shalashim, the old city, uh, which, by the way, those that don't know the word Shalashim means roots. For us, it was our roots back in the land when we came here, back in 1984 and 85. Uh, but the store has become a place of people looking for their own roots and their own connection. Uh, so we welcome you back. Uh, this is our way of reaching out to you and hopefully you feeling connected back to the land and back to Jerusalem. Uh, and what we try to do is every week just present a, a, a thought from this, this week's Torah, Torah portion. As Jews, we believe that every Torah portion has within it nuggets, truths that we need to know in our lives as a people, uh, in the world, and in our own personal lives. So today, we're going to be focusing on the Torah portion of Balak. That's Numbers 22.2 2 to chapter 25.9. Um, today is the is June, is the 14th day of Tammuz, June 24th, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and um, what we want to do is focus on what it means to walk in our world today. Uh, this is a world wherein things keep pulling us from one side to the other, where politically correct coercion sometimes makes us feel like we're evil when we want to move in a different direction. And when our own truths seem to be battered, and then when we want to stand by our truth, we're shunned, and when we abandon our truth, we feel as if we've lost our sense of idealism. How do you live in a world like that? How do you walk in a world like that? How do you move forward or do you not? Do you hunker down, don't get involved, stay by yourself, separate yourself from the world? That's really the question. Those are the two choices. Get involved, walk with, and, and, and sometimes put aside some of your belief systems or uh, ignore it and avoid them and stay in your own, separate yourself from the world. So it turns out that neither of those are the options we need to be going on. So let's go back to a very unusual section in, in the book of Numbers. As I said, we're doing Balak, Numbers 22.2 to 25.9. The people of Israel are coming out of Egypt uh, and they're frightening the people in the land of Canaan. And one of them, the king Balak, turns to his people and says, we need help because this seems to be a supernatural force that's coming at us. How do we deal with that? How do we cope with that? The only way to do that is to use another supernatural force. And they go to Bilam. Bilam was considered the prophet to the nations. Bilam uh, was able to hear God's directions, but as we shall soon see, not always follow God's directions. And Bilam, uh, they come over to Bilam, and he sends, Bil, Balak sends messengers to Bilam, and he tries to entice him with riches and power, and he says to Bilam, you have to come. We, we need you. Because we know that everybody that you curse gets cursed, and everybody that you bless gets blessed. But God makes it very clear to Bilam that that's not going to happen. And the verse is Numbers 22, 12. Don't go with them. Don't curse this nation, for they are blessed. And Bilam gets it, by the way. He says to these messengers, he says, He wakes up, remember, he envisions God in night visions, which says a lot about his vision, but We'll leave that aside for now. Vayakam bil ambaboke wakes up in the morning. Vayomer v'sarei balak. He says to the the masters of balak, "Go back, Elatzakim. Go back to your land. Ki me'en Hashem letiti laloch imachem. Hashem won't let me walk with you or go back with you." But balak does not give up. His 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 he, he feels threatened and he needs to deal with this spiritual entity that's coming at him. So he 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 sends him again requests, enticements. We're going to give you power. We're going to give you money. And Bilam turns back to Hashem and he says, uh, Bilam says, okay, let me, let me go and think about it. Let me try to speak to God again. And essentially, after Bilam, Balak says, I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make you give you, you know, whatever you want, I'll do just come. 
Hashem goes to Hayavo Elokim Bilam. God comes to Bilam at night and says, Im anashim. If these people came to call you, Kum Lechitam, go with them. But Raketa Davar Shar Daber Lechatota said, Just what I say to you, that's what you need to do. So, what happened? Why did God change his mind? And it gets even stranger. Bilam gets up in the morning, he saddles a donkey, he's rushing to do, you know, our sages actually make a point. Abraham rushed in the morning to do God's bidding with Isaac. And the same words are used here where Bilam is rushing in the morning to curse the people of Israel. He wakes up in the morning. He goes with the Sarei Moav. And then we see that God is angry. He says, the verse says, God angry, because he's going. And he sends an angel to Satanize him. That's, by the way, a whole other discussion of the Jewish concept, or the biblical concept of what Satan really means. But he sends an angel to Satanize him, Satan lo, not to let him go through because he's angry at him. Well, what's he angry about? What did Bilam do? Bilam, you gave him permission. So in order to understand that, we need to really read the Hebrew text very clearly. So bear with me. If you have a, 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 the Tanakh with you, go to verse 20. He says, you shall not go with them, he says to him. Hashem tells Bilam, lo tilech imahem, ein mem mem. Don't go with them. Bilam understands that, and he says to the emissaries, he says, he, Bilam says, um, I understand that. I understand that Hashem doesn't want me to go with you, imchem, using that same thing. And then finally, after all this debating back and forth, Hashem says, okay, if they came for you, kum lech itam, not imahem, itam. There's a difference. First it's imahem, imam, now it's itam. And then we see that meaning he didn't hear that. He went with them. What's the difference between imam the itam? That's the key. So itam means, imam means go with them with the same purpose, with the same idea, with their, you're, you're walking with the same purpose to achieve the same purpose. That Hashem says you cannot do. Their purpose is evil. You can go with them, itam, but not imam, not with them. When he goes with them, Hashem gets angry. And the whole story with the donkey, etc., etc. That's a great lesson. We don't have to separate ourselves from the world. We don't. We can walk itam, we can walk with the world, we can learn from the world, we can join with the world when the world is doing something that is of value, that has a divine purpose, that is achieving divine purpose. But never, ever forget not to walk with them. Don't get caught up with where they're going and its purpose. Stay connected to your purpose. So don't separate for yourself from the world. Elevate the world. And the only way to elevate the world is never abandon your purpose. Never abandon your prime goal for walking in the first place. So the world is lost. I, that is clear. The world has lost its ability to discern. The greatest power God has given us, discernment, has gotten fogged over in the world. But, but if you separate from that world, they're going to feel, A, then I don't need to bother with them. But B, they're going to feel judged. I, you've probably had that experience where you've been passionate about something and talking to your friends, your relatives, about something new you've learned, and every word you say makes them feel more judged. And that was not your purpose. Your purpose was to share, to teach, to explain, and they felt judged. Learn how to walk with, but to not walk with. Learn how to walk itam, but not imam. Stay connected to who you are, your purpose, Hashem's purpose in our world, and you're going to find that suddenly heads will begin to turn. Directions will begin to change. But they need to see the strength and the courage that you have within you and not see the animosity, 
the arrogance, the looking down at the other. That's the, it's a very de delicate balance. There's a great song that, that was sung and it came from the words of Rav Nachman Abrasov, Kol Olam Kulo, the whole world is a very narrow bridge. But in order to walk it, you have to walk a straight line. You have to be able to walk and not turn from side to side. And the song continues, Velolifach, don't ever have fear. Don't be afraid to be you. And don't be afraid to connect to all those around you. And by so doing, you will change the world. So thank you all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of our YouTube channel, Shorshim Insights on YouTube. Thank you for visiting our website. Uh, thank you for visiting our Facebook page. Our Moshe Shorshim Facebook page is almost filled up, but our Shorshim Shop Facebook page, anybody can join and follow. Um, and thank you for those of you that have supported us with your purchases. If you see something you like, we're always trying to come up, even in this time where there's hardly any work going around, jewelers aren't working, to try to come up with new products so that you can feel you've been blessed while you bless. And uh, Shabbat Shalom. And we will see you again in Jerusalem. Right now the gates have been closed again for a period of time, a month they say, because they don't know how this new COVID thing will, will play itself out. But... Uh, we're here, and your hearts are here in this land. That connection doesn't get uh, weakened and doesn't change. So Shabbat Shalom from Yerushalayim, and thank you for being with us. Bye-bye.